in the moment. Um, yes. yes, we are here. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is not a what's your story live coaching session. This is just you know what? You know what, Leia? I think this is just business storytelling, but it's not even about business storytelling. Today is something special. I think it's something different because I have with me here Leia D. Hold on. Mills Chaplin. I had to get that right. I had to get that right. And before I give you her introduction, we're going to be talking about the spa three spaces here, and, and she's going to combine them together. We're going to just have this conversation about trauma, personal storytelling, and the media agenda. How the media can play into one's trauma and shape stories that uh, just shift our perspective on certain things. Like right now, what's happening here in South Florida with um, the uh, the apartment complex that that has collapsed, or at least part of it. Uh, that's all I'm seeing on the news, right? What? How does that play into trauma? So things like this is what we're going to be discussing, but more so from a personal perspective in the beginning. So, Leia, I'm so glad to have you here. Let me read your bio. People need to know your street cred. They got to know who you are, and then we're going to get right into it. So, ladies and gentlemen, Leia D. Mills Chaplin is also known as the mental reconstructionist. She's a licensed clinical therapist, and she specializes in traumatology. She's also the chief executive officer of Intervene. And Leia is a sought-after consultant, trainer, speaker, lecturer. By the way, I just got to pause here. You, the, the, the presentation that you did, um, I think it was during the pandemic. You probably did quite a few, but there was one particular one. It almost had a spoken word feel to it. You were like piecing together particular, I think, songs or lyrics. And well, then, oh, oh, that was so good. <laughs> anyway, I just got to let you know that, uh, you know, spoken word might be part of your calling. Just saying. Um, she's also a clinical supervisor of other professionals in mental health and wellness, including trauma-informed focused practices. Leia also transforms the lives of severely emotionally disturbed individuals in family systems. And additionally, Leia has utilized this tutelage and assisted social systems and companies in transforming their environment into emotionally safe and culturally inclusive spaces. Everybody, welcome to the, I don't, show, interview, discussion, chat. <laughs> <laughs> Leia, I'm so glad that you're a part of this conversation. Um, so let's let's just dive right into it. Talk to me about trauma, just uh, what it is, mm -hmm. what it does, and then we're going to transition into how does that affect one's story that they tell about or stories that they tell about themselves. Yeah, yeah. So I often say that trauma for the novice, right, someone that is just starting to get their feel of it is really just looking at something that was bad and it happened to them in their past, right? Mm. And we find that it makes it kind of difficult for them to function and operate on a daily basis. Like it comes in the way of them being able to perform um, their ADLs, right? Or the, those things that they need to do, get up, shower, go to work, have good sound relationships with other individuals, um, love themselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we find that uh, definitely it, it um, brings about a manner of distress for the mm -hmm. individual um, in their daily functioning. So that just is, you know, an overview, brief intro into what trauma is. Mm -hmm. um, when we hear of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, that is the clinical diagnosis that one would receive if they met criteria for um, trauma. Gotcha. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So we've broken down what it is. It's, it's, so this is from the, on the experience side, something mm -hmm. negative that has happened. It now affects. Now you mentioned the term ADL, break that down yeah. for us. So it's just basically your active daily living, right? So okay. what you're doing as far as you're functioning on a day-to-day -day basis, again, mm -hmm. being able to get up and actually perform life's work. Yeah. Uh, most times a person that has incurred either a simple or even a complex level of trauma, mm -hmm. um, they find it difficult. So let's say for a child, a child might have a difficult time wanting to go to school. Um, they may 
you know, develop what one well, what we call somatic symptoms, meaning like these feelings within the body, physiological responses within the body that makes it difficult for them to remain in space, right? Mm. Um, the same would be for an adult if they were right in the workforce. And we're finding a lot of that happening um, over this pandemic. Um, so again, you know, it's not just emotional or psychological, um, right. effects of trauma, but it also is physiological effects as well. Okay. So psychological, physiological effects, it, it, uh, it impacts in a negative way, um, one's active daily living, their routine, uh, the normal things that they would typically do on a consistent yeah. basis. What's the gap? Cause now, now I'm interested. There's this this negative experience, it now infiltrates one's ADL, mm -hmm. you know, and is it is it something that, it almost seems as if there's like a subconscious and then a conscious level to what they're telling themselves that prevents them from doing particular activities? I don't know, is, is that? <laughs> so, very interesting, right? I love that. Um, so when we're looking at this thing called trauma, it will impact, right, the, the conscious brain, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may say, man, I just don't feel like doing something, but they don't know why, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And yeah. so the subconscious brain, like trauma, when it, it comes in, it comes to a cellular level, right? Mm -hmm. So when we reference it, we always say the body keeps the score, right? Yeah. So in our cells, whatever has happened to us, there is a recording, right? right? And so sometimes the brain may suppress certain things, right? Or repress it, put into the back of the mind, because in the moment you're unable to deal with it and manage it, but it's still in there, right? So you will see that individuals might not be able to sit still. Yeah. Right. So they're up and they're moving around and and, you know, can't focus on this particular thing, but they don't know why. And then, mm. you know, they're, they're finding that they cannot attend to anything. That is the subconscious. Right. Mm. That is the body remembering what may have occurred. And so now the environment that they're in doesn't make them feel safe. Wow. So when we talk about. um the enhancing of future safety. Like that's one critical piece of um, a person being able to move through their trauma. Okay. They have to be in a safe space to even attend to what has happened to them, to even want to recall or to bring forward what they don't even remember yet. So you have to create safe space for them. Okay. okay. Yeah. So creating, creating a safe space, I would, would it be would it be safe <laughs> to say that this is um, uh, a type of story that one needs to tell themselves so that their subconscious can feel yeah. secure? Okay, so yeah. okay, so let's so man, there's a, there's a few things to unpack here. So mm -hmm. okay, because if subconsciously you're you're on a cellular level, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. are telling yourself um, something's not okay. In mm -hmm. the environment that I'm in, regardless of whatever that environment is, is, is preventing me from uh, functioning normally because mm -hmm. I'm kind of in the, not fight, but maybe flight mode, perhaps? Potentially. Okay. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. Um, mm -hmm. And so in, in this, in this, in this space that I have cellularly told myself something's not okay, what matriculates up to the conscious level to make me realize that? Is it typically somebody that has to tell me, hey, what's what's wrong? Or hmm. does something happen within me, you know, to the consciousness that says, okay, I, I got to get help or there's, something's not right. Yeah. What do we tell ourselves there? So I want to kind of shift what you're saying, right? Just okay. a little bit. You're okay. saying, is there something within me that I'm telling that I'm not safe? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're not consciously necessarily telling yourself that you're not safe. Your mm -hmm. body okay. is 
for you, right? We're separating. Okay, gotcha. Right. So, okay. so the body is communicating that it's mm. unsafe, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I often tell individuals, your body is like an alarm system, okay. right? So you have nerve endings, right? You have muscle, right? And muscle memory, right? Yes. So if something potentially may have occurred to you, let's say a level of abuse, I deal with a lot of clients that have incurred sexual assault, mm -hmm. right? And so the body may have tensed up, right? To protect itself, to deal with the impact of what is happening. Mm -hmm. So let's say I go into an environment, right? And the environment doesn't feel well to my body, right? Because my brain is picking up on some things that are reminiscent of the bad experience that gotcha. happened to me. Now, my body is saying to my brain, you're not safe. Not my brain saying to my body, you aren't safe. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it so it is important to separate the two. So so okay. So when we come from a, a storytelling perspective and I guess we're going to have to broaden the the definition of of telling a story. So so let's mm -hmm. let's let's use this construct. And maybe we can still use the same definition. So a story mm -hmm. is um a a unit that includes a set of events mm -hmm. from beginning to end that typically has a conflict that needs to be resolved or something that needs to be resolved, right? So there's a story. And then there's a narrative, which is a set of these units or a set of these stories. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that the body is, is, um, is signaling to the brain stories or these units of, okay, there's a conflict and it can't be resolved or it's not able to be So in other words, the body doesn't have the capacity to resolve the story, so to speak. At it's all. really the brain's uh, uh, function to say, okay, conflict, let's complete the narrative or let's complete the story. Exactly. Um, how many, and I, I, this is probably a, rhetor a rhetorical question, but how many clients do you, do you encounter that have these unresolved stories that are just, like, how do you, how, do you have to untangle them? Like what happens to them coming to you and saying, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, I'm just kind of thinking like, because yeah, the body yeah. is, you know, is, and, and not only that, but there are multiple areas where the body is triggered, but they're not sure why, because oftentimes, you know, they don't even know where the trauma in a sense not not necessarily where it stemmed from, but why this particular environment is creating this yeah. visceral this reaction. This yes, visceral you got it. You um, got it. And so you how, how do you find, entangle that? Well, you often find in trauma that many don't recall the incident, mm. right? Um, one of the symptoms of trauma is dissociation. Okay. Right. So that is the mind trying to protect you from something that you really could not take in that should not be really happening to you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but it is. And so how best can an individual manage it? They will split. Gotcha. OK, so when you come back, let's say they're like, OK, something is going on with me. I'm troubled. I'm distressed a lot. Right. Whenever I go to work and I try to attend to this particular thing or the school and I'm trying to attend or in my relationships, I just cannot make the connection with other individuals. And mm -hmm. we begin to, like we say, pull back the layers or the onion. Right. And we get them to a space again where they feel settled in their bodies enough. Hmm. To begin their narrative, which is a significant part of, right, kind of managing your trauma, right? Because yeah. it never leaves. It's there to stay, right? Oh, well, hold yeah. on. Let's, let's pause there. You said it's there to stay. Oh, it, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. I'm going to make a mental note because <laughs> I think we have to get back to that. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes you think of overcoming or, but you're saying, no, it's really managing, not eliminating or yeah. removing trauma. Okay. That's, that's an important point. I, I think of this, yeah. the, the movie, I think I brought it up uh, not too long ago, a beautiful mind, yeah. you know, we're at the very end, you know, mm -hmm. his, uh, uh, his hallucination characters still there. And they're asking, you know, are they there with you right now? Can you see that? He's like, yeah. 
Yeah. But he has control over them. Um, and you're saying that trauma, or, or I even I even brought up, I don't know if you've seen this one, uh, the Babadook uh, psychological. I that. No. Okay. No. Very similar, very similar narrative, just on a psychological horror, maybe Jordan Peele-ish kind of, you know, <laughs> before Jordan Peele was Jordan Peele. But, you know, um, <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> he didn't direct it, but, <laughs> but it's, it's a little, you know, it's like, oh, but at the end of the, you know, at the end of the day, um, it, it's managing this horrific experience or hallucinatory, hallucinatory, mm -hmm. is that, is that experiences and then learning how to to live with it so you're saying before we move on you're saying yeah. trauma stays mm -hmm. and stays. the only role that trauma now has is well what is the role now i mean you know we say, we talk about turning lemons into lemonade so if trauma technically is the lemon mm -hmm. is it even is it is it is that even a fair analogy to say oh you know just turn your trauma into something good i don't know i don't that doesn't sit well with me i well, again, that's the power of the story. Mm, okay. okay. Right? That, yeah. That's the power of the brain to be able to take a situation mm -hmm. and craft it into something of utility. Okay. Right? Okay. So multiple things could have happened in your life, but how do you hold space for that? Right. What do you want to do with it? Now that you acknowledge it, now that it has been brought forth, and I do want to add this, most times when an individual um, is trying to recall and to share their story, they're filling in gaps with things that didn't necessarily occur, right? Because mm -hmm. they're trying to make sense of right. what happened, right? That has caused yeah. distress in the body and research is showing that they are filling it in so that it all makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the narrative is a powerful tool because wow. it brings about something tangible. Okay. Versus, right, the question marks that trauma leaves. Mm, okay. So if I can now hold something, now it can make sense to me. And now I can take this tool, right, yeah. my, my narrative, and mm -hmm. I can then put it in any space to do whatever, which is why you see, um, for instance, I talk about this a lot, um, mm -hmm. Kevin Hart's uh, movie that he did, well, not movie, but stand up, right? Mm -hmm. Laughing at your pain. Okay. Okay. He yeah. took his story yeah. and he used it towards something that was going to be beneficial to him in a healing space, as well as yeah. to others. He showed that um, to heal, you can also use laughter. The Bible mm -hmm. speaks about laughter being right. medicine, right. right? This is good. So, so what? What's the ethical or fine line between <clears throat> reframing your story? And just straight out lying to yourself, <laughs> like just creating, you know, a narrative that you, you use and you say, you know what, I'm going to make this something for all yeah, intents and purposes. <laughs> yeah, outlandish <laughs> and just turn it, you know, how, how do we manage that? Because I think that there there is a line, right, to be told as far as, you know, how much can you realistically reframe? Mm -hmm. the 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 traumatic experience so that it's not you um you know being delusional about what happened as well you know and and saying i don't i don't know is is that for me or for you to 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 i'm loving it come on <laughs> <laughs> right? to, to to expect or to you know to to tell somebody um to do with their own uh trauma cuz man you you probably have experienced the stories that people tell themselves and you're like really that's how you want to <laughs> how yeah what's what's the line that needs to be told between reframing and just totally uprooting the thing and making it into something that really isn't or is that even a fair question to ask well it, it's whew, it, it's um it's tricky right okay. so in therapy, when someone is working through their trauma and they've gotten to a space where they're at the point of the narrative, like there's steps that we kind of go through, right? Okay. So first we want to start out with psychoeducation, just on understanding what trauma is. Similarly to when you said, what is it, right? Mm -hmm. 
um, then we want to make certain that right they have the 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 um, wherewithal to even hold space for that. So we want to go mm. through relaxation techniques, right? We want to relax the body so that the body can feel truth. Okay. Right. Because if I am in a space of wanting to defend, because in my mind, maybe there's guilt, maybe right. there's shame, right? Or maybe there's denial, and I begin to craft what this story looks like that makes it palatable for me. Right. When we get to the, the actual right creation of the narrative, we don't allow for one story to be crafted once. We allow for you to craft your story again. Right. right. So that you're able to see is there any amount of difference right in your recall. Of your reality mm, yeah now yeah. you may have your support network that was in your life and and a lot of times we want people to bear witness of right yeah. that's yes. the, the testimony right if you look at the church they they need to have someone to bear witness of their pain right mm. Mm. and so with that sometimes you'll find individuals say ah, that didn't happen and so we stop them because it's not for the other individual, right, to give credence to their story. It's just to bear witness mm, okay. to their story. Okay. So their story becomes, right, their truth for them so that they can manage and maintain. Mm, okay. Now, when we're looking at delusion, then that's not just that story. That is their life. Mm they are functioning and operating from a space of delusion right mm -hmm. of grandeur like things just do not necessarily match with reality and so we want right. to work with them a reality-based thinking outside of their story okay but we want for them to be able to and many times right the dissociation we need to reintegrate right truth into the body so that they can then live their life right at a more mm. reality based stance wow so it's it sounds as if based on what we're saying you know a lot of it begins with the body first if the it body does. is is tense and defensive then that can lead to um and i don't want to oversimplify but inaccurate um and denial at least in the beginning of you attempting to retell or to recall what has happened or just a lack of recollection altogether altogether wow okay okay um, yeah, so how, okay so how does how does this and I, and I like this so so obviously if in order to have okay so before we move over to the to the media side um the goal of personal storytelling to, and, mm -hmm. and in this case we're talking about how your trauma um, can be reframed in order for you to move on or yeah. to progress through life at, at least to have the ADLs in place, right? In exactly. order to, to reintegrate into the daily living. Um, is it more about accuracy versus acceptance versus what is it before we move to the media <laughs> side? Cause you already know the media then. So, so, so. Um, well, well, think yeah. about the media. What does the media do? It takes reality mm -hmm. and it crafts a story around it that will sell, right? Mm -hmm. That people will buy into because there is another agenda behind it. Mm -hmm. So, right? okay. So, so how do we, because, you know, we, we know that there, there is, <clears throat> There's media, then there are journalists. There, there are individuals who they preserve the integrity and the accuracy of what um, a narrative is, and they do their due diligence to make sure that they've got the the sources. They've got you know everything is is um, is almost surgical, so that when they produce this thing, it is um, it is it is newsworthy, but also relevant. Hopefully, it's helpful. You know it's valuable. Um, so so let's separate the two, and we might need to talk about the difference between those who are the the protectors of true narratives <laughs> versus 
versus a machine, right? That takes or sensationalizes yeah. some of these stories so that it can trigger or to take advantage of undealt or un unattended trauma, if that's a proper term. So, so we're going to separate the two. Let's deal with, let's go positive first. Let's deal with the journalists okay. Okay. <laughs> and, and how they, and how they work in, you know, this, this environment. Um, hmm. And I know we're, we're, you know, we're not, you know, in, in the, in the journalistic field. However, let's, let's just kind of dive in and, and explore here. Mm -hmm. What would be necessary for them to share stories that doesn't manipulate the media, sorry, doesn't manipulate the consumers, those of us who are watching, those of us who are reading, um, experiencing these narratives, um, what must they do to make sure, to, I guess, to preserve the integrity of the story, but also not play into the trauma that can manipulate our reaction to what we have, or or should they even be mindful of that? This question is getting more and more complex. <laughs> should, should they even be, you know, because uh, in other words, are some stories just not, uh, not worth sharing because of perhaps what could happen to, uh, let's just, I'm just yeah, saying, the, the, the American people or, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and forgive me. I've been rewatching Scandal, so it's probably to mess me up. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking, man, there's some stuff that just should not be said. So, um, yeah, so let's, let's talk about that first. Journalists and their responsibility with um, with storytelling and how that would impact, uh, uh, especially like, let's say, for the pandemic, which has been a traumatic experience for many of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> this is something that we talk about in therapy and we talk amongst ourselves with this, right? Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. isn't just for the onlooker, but for the one that is sitting in space with that person holding their pain. Okay. Many go into these types of professions, including journalists, right? Because they are voyeurs. Yeah. They're voyeurs and they want to look into the lives of others. Mm -hmm. They want to know the nitty gritty, right? Of yeah. what is going on. We call that sliming. Mm, okay. Right? Okay. Because the, the question is, is it helpful to the individual mm -hmm. that you are right trying to get this story from? How are you helping them? Yeah. So that's what I would say that you lead with. Okay is what benefit are you giving to this person that is entrusting you with their pain? What benefit will they get out of it? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. ask them, right? So for me as a therapist, I do my client a disservice by going in and leading with what I want them to get, mm. which is why we have, right? An individual individualized, right? Service plan. Right. What do you want? Right. Because the 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 healing for you is going to be what you need it to be, not me. And so I help to lead, guide and direct you to the goal that you have for you. Gotcha. So instead of just saying, oh, this is a good story. Let me go over there and see what Chris got going on, mm -hmm. because I heard right that he had a divorce and this is right. And so they're, they're just getting into the slime of it all. Yeah. And do they stop to really think about years later, if someone was to look back in their lineage and they see this story, mm -hmm. will it do harm or will it actually do good to continue to empower, right? The lineage of this particular individual, wow. right? Wow. So I would say lead with that. I would also say check the bias of, right? The reporter, like check yourself, mm. do some deep introspection, right? Because you have a story yourself that will then inform the story that you give about someone else. Mm. I often say my trauma will meet up against somebody else's trauma. How am I going to deal with it when I begin to have the visceral reaction of hearing your proverbial truth? Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So 
that that would be you know the two things that i would say definitely for anyone that is looking into being a journalist to cover these stories look at your intent mm -hmm. in going into this particular story of choice don't look for the sliming effect, right? Where you're then just kind of being a voyeur and living vicariously through the pain right. of another, right? Because a lot of individuals go into professions and they're not healed. And so as they take one another's pain, they are then able to no longer feel numb, right? From their trauma, because uh, now giving them a dose, right? right. Of just a bit more pain. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um. So so let's let's transition from journalists to um producers. Okay. I, I mentioned Jordan Peele earlier, but um, mm. what about this? Is it is it a is it a is it does it come in waves and cycles? Because it now seems that we are now in a, a new era of um, neo-slavery movies that, and that's probably not the term, but you know, where, where and people have mentioned this a lot, where we're exploiting, or it, the argument is we are, or the argument is that uh, slavery and the traumatic experience that we've had, you know, from the diaspora to um, yeah. it just systemic racism, yeah. Jim Crow, just whatever we have experienced as African Americans here in the United States is being uh, retold in very creative ways. I've seen some series that got the the spiritualism stuff attached to it, and then I've seen the ones that is just straight up you know, documentary yeah. style, but um, what, what is to be said about those who are recreating these mm -hmm. narratives that, and I don't want to use the word playing into the trauma, but it's, it's opening it up. It, it's, it, is it, is it fair to say that this is, hmm, because there's different sides, right? One could argue, you know, this is just the bubble right now, and this is just the thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exploit black trauma and 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 yeah. you know people are interested in it right now and because of everything that's been happening, especially over the last you know year. But I I honestly want to say that there are individuals who you know creative directors, mm -hmm. it's something that they want to explore and it's not because of some you know market bubble where they know that it's it's the season and it's going to sell right now. It's it's just. Mm -hmm. So putting them, but they're all in the same camp. They're so they're all still producing these kinds of of uh, of movies, documentaries, videos. So is there a fine line between? I don't know. Maybe the word. Maybe is it you know documenting what has happened and 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 recounting what has yeah. happened versus yeah. recreating it in new and in, in in innovative ways. Yeah, that yeah. helps us to, you know, Watchmen is probably a, a great example where I, it's to my understanding, there are a lot of people that didn't even under, didn't even know about Black Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, and the Definitely. massacre until they watched an HBO. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> network show Definitely. versus yeah. you know reading it in you know, and I'm I, history books our joke but you know but <laughs> reading it or or, or or you know or doing the research so all of that to say is is there a is there a place okay let's back up does exploiting okay let me not use the word exploiting because that's a leading question does recounting and recalling it either from a, a journalistic standpoint or creative standpoint does it is it does it create a safe space for people to engage and to because we just talked about it the fact that mm -hmm. how trauma does you know your body doesn't react to it um and i'll be real with you when i saw judas and the black messiah hmm. and then ended up watching malcolm x after I was, I was ready i was ready to i was ready to be the revolutionary <laughs> <laughs> I was I was ready to take the bullet. So so like what yeah. does that do for 
for especially African Americans, for Black people who are watching these shows, is it okay? Is it okay to enter? Maybe this is the real question. Is it okay yeah. to enter into the space? Which, let's be real, it's not safe. A lot of it is going to open up some questions and some emotions. But is it what you do after that, or what is the responsibility? Oh my goodness, Leia, I'm just <laughs> adding on questions. What is the responsibility of those who are creating these environments, and then also, I guess, what is our responsibility when we consume it? Okay. 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 We'll, we'll stop there. We'll stop. So let let me kind of, because I, I was following you along. So let me try okay. to just kind of start here. Okay. A person's truth carries weight, mm. right? The recount, right, or recall in, you know, mass media of a particular thing, again, looking at it from the intent of the one that produces, right? But then it also, let's say they have good intention towards the work, the body of work. Mm -hmm. It will make very salient, right? The pain for the onlooker, to then bear witness again, right? So trauma okay. is all about the bearing witness of so that I don't have to carry this burden alone. Remember okay. I said it always lives with you because what goes in right. stays, right? Our brain is the baddest computer on the face of this earth, right? <laughs> so, you know, we often talk about, you know, play the tape back because mm. it's not going anywhere. It's right. there. It's just what we do with it. Yes. It's how we honor it. And so some of those that are producing, right, these counts of what has happened historically, they are honoring space for that, right? Mm -hmm. Because you've been canceled out, mm. right? Black and brown individuals in this country have been canceled out, mm. right? Either we're there to, right, bring joy, and financial right stability to another or else we really don't matter right wow. it's the black lives matter if you're looking at it from a historical context which right. is why we don't want the history shared mm -hmm. so i believe that there are individuals who are forwarding right these um stories to make it very salient to penetrate the souls of individuals who lack empathy. Mm, okay. Right? Okay. And they tend to be the perpetrators as the reason in which we need to share story to connect heart to heart as human beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we know that that is a deep work, right? That That is a, a tedious work. Yeah. Um, I currently am in my um, <laughs> look, I, I have two professions on so my, my day job. And then I also have, you know, my private practice. But I am the co-director of the Black Lives Matter task force for a large county organization. OK. And so what we do is, is we take we call it chat and shoes and we take um, a historical situation. We parallel it to something that is happening in today's times. Right. So that you cannot escape with white innocence and say, well, that wasn't me. Mm, OK, so we're okay. going to bring it forward. Right. To something that's happened currently. And now I want for you to sit with my pain, yes. my ancestors pain and find out where you fit into the picture today. Mm, OK. Right. So some of the recounts are needed so that it penetrates individuals so that they are human. When we look at trauma and bad things that have happened to individuals, many have dehumanized the victim. Hmm. Two thirds person, right? Mm -hmm. Or human. They've dehumanized the victim, right? And so we want to, a lot of times, right? Bring the perpetrator in space so that they can now begin to see and to feel again, if at all possible. Hmm. And that's a whole nother story. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's a whole nother. So, so if they never come across these creative, this creative media. Yeah. 
are we simply preaching to the choir? Are we simply reopening for those of us, um, you know, black and brown people who are watching uh, the the mm -hmm. the documentaries, the movies, you know, the, the videos, um, yes. the stories that are being replayed, and it's it's opening up the space where yeah. it should hold those who probably are less empathetic. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say accountable. That that may not be you know fair, but um, it should create an awareness. Hopefully, strike a chord. Hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully, strike a chord and say, "Well, what can I do about this?" Like you said, where am I in this story, and what do I play? What role do I play in it today? I see historically, but now today, what what is it that I should do? Um, you know, so so. If they never come across it, I guess my question is, is it healthy for those of us who, you know, who watch these, these, uh, you know, we consume this media, what does it do for us? If it just opens up that trauma, what do we do with it? You yeah. know, I, because yeah. like I said, after watching a set of, you know, that was, I'm, what am I going to do with that energy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? That, you know? that. Those traumatic reminders definitely will right build about a flood of emotions. And so when you say, what should I do with it? That's a personal question. Mm. Again, it mm. is taking the pain and it is making a product. Yeah. And sometimes the product isn't for right the perpetrator. It's for you. Mm. It's for you to be able to say, hey, this is my truth. And whether you want to receive, because most people that are perpetrators don't receive, right? <laughs> because they still want to, um, to retain the image that they have of themselves. Yeah. Right. Or their intent may still be to do harm. And so when you bring to them their truth and if they shun it, what does that do? It brings right back the pain again. Wow. So many times it's not for them. So it's all again about the intent of the story. Who's getting the story? Who's giving the story? What is it that you hope to seek? Mm. And when you, let's say, just by happenstance, right? I'm black and I got to see this because yes. everybody is going to see this, yes. right? You don't want it to be a moment in time. Mm. You want to receive even the pain that it brings. And you want to take that pain again and turn it into a product. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, so, so I should... One should not be binge watching these movies from back to back. The, you know, you know I, I say with without media, the intent. Yeah. yeah, with media, you shouldn't binge watch anything. Period. I think that yeah. that is very detrimental to the mind. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Even with you know <laughs> the pandemic and looking at okay, like how many people have died. Okay, how many yeah. African Americans have died? Okay, yeah. and I'm watching this day in and day out, and 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 many, Chris, I'm gonna tell you, many have no clue mm. that all of this was about mind control. Wow, wow. all of it mm. was about mind control. Mm. Most media, I remember there was a a show that, well, a movie that came out, um, and I think it was called In and Out. It was a cartoon. You know what I'm talking about? And yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Like these little things. And so I was taking my daughter, my husband and I, we went and, and went to the movies and I'm sitting there and I'm like, hmm, they could not have just come up with this without having a whole crew that were psychologists. Mm -hmm. Inside out, I think is what. Inside yeah. out. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Without a whole crew. Right, okay. of psychologists who understand brain science mm -hmm. and brain behavior. Wow, wow, right? Mm -hmm. Our thoughts influence feelings and behaviors in nanoseconds. Wow, so if they'll do that for a child or children's movie, hmm. think about what they're doing on a world stage. 
there are psychologists informing everything that we receive. They're not ready for that, Leah. They're not ready for that. Hey, listen, listen. And, and for those of you watching, we're not talking about conspiracy theory type. No, no. What we're saying, and this, this is an actual uh, communication theory called agenda setting. And yeah. so for those of you that uh, are not familiar with that, I would invite you to go ahead, look that up. It's called the agenda setting theory um, and media agenda yeah. setting. And, and what this does is it really helps to shape like Leah was talking about the mindsets, the perspectives. I, I mean, think about it. It's it's. I think it's 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 highly polarized and obvious during election season. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Every every four years, um, and you can see the the agendas that are set based on the the actual. Um, uh, uh, CBN, NBC, CBS. Please yeah. help, help me out here. What, what are they called? What are they called, Leah? They're they're based based um, on the uh, not the studio, oh like the goodness. primary the primary um, news. Yeah, uh, based on uh, based on the news company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's escaping me right yeah. now. There are particular philosophies, mm -hmm. and based on that philosophy, there are reams of media that comes in, commentary that comes in, questions that may not even be answered, but questions to at least get the ideas out there so that viewers can, um, for lack of a better word, fall in line with yeah. one or the other. And if we really want to get into it, there's the Hegelian. Uh, classical, it's called classical conditioning. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So let's let's so let's uh so let's now tie in this media piece. So we talked about you know journalists. Yeah. We talked about uh, creative directors and mm -hmm. and um, producers who should be responsible in how they are creating and distributing. Yeah, movies, media that will exp that will help us to explore. I don't want to say exploit, but man, you know there there's that side too. There are people who do, who do exploit it. But at the end of the day, you're saying even though they have a responsibility, we have a responsibility to if we choose to watch it to embrace what am I going to do with it? Yeah, what yeah. is the end game for me consuming this piece of content that is going to open up a wound that I might have never for some explored yeah. or considered before and for others it's 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 not new um but what am i going to do and then we now have this other side where there are media machines corporations that are churning out yeah what the journalists are having and they you got yeah. it. and and so i guess we'll wrap up with with the big machine now um mm -hmm. and and uh we'll try to be as balanced as possible but you know there's just a lot <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, we don't want to come off as, you know, the cynical. It, it's tough. Uh, but yeah. I will say this. I do remember, especially last year, where they had really the ticket counter, the, the, the part of the screen that had the numbers of many of the people who um, uh, died from COVID, those who were infected. like, And it was there every, like you said, every, every single day. day. What wasn't day. there were the amount of recoveries. There we go. Um, and you know, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother, but th there was a slanted, let's be real. There was a slanted view mm -hmm. on the, the, the playing into the tragedy. In, indeed. Yeah. Um, or not just so much playing into the tragedy, but mm -hmm. again, most everything is based on making an emotional connection. Let's just say when you do a sales like pitch, right? Yeah you're trying to evoke emotion in the individual so that they attach to you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so everything that is done, I mean, a child cries yeah, because they want their parents, right, to attend to their whim. That's right, that's right. Right? And so it starts very early on from childhood mm -hmm. on up that we now see in behavioral modification that there is like this emotional give and take. Right, wow. wow. And so to be able to get anybody, right? Mm -hmm. Even in sharing your story, right? Remember you said you had seen that clip of me. Yeah. I started out with music, why? Yeah. 
because music brings about emotion. Yeah. It takes you back to a time when, right? You yeah. heard that song, right? Or that little jingle, yeah. right? And you begin to feel good. And I got them going, right? I had the audience going and I'm like, yeah. hey, clap it up with me, right? <laughs> right, they had bought in Yes. right there. And that was 30 seconds to a minute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 30 seconds, think about that. Yeah. 30 seconds to a minute, I was able to evoke emotion and turn people's attention center to me. Yes. And so everything that I told them after that, they did it. I said, stand with me. They stood. Yeah. I said, repeat after me. They repeated. Right? Yeah. So everything is about, right, the evoking of emotion. The journalists, they want mm. to be recognized. They must evoke emotion. That's why I said, be careful of the intent. Be mm. careful of the sliming. What is it doing to you? How is it helpful to, right, the individual whose story you're taking? How is it going to impact the audience? All of that is considered when we're looking at the larger media platforms, right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's all incorporated. Nothing is done in isolation of knowing how to pull the heartstrings of humans. It seems like that's what it boils down to. <laughs> it really does boil down to us being feeling yeah, I, I recently, I, I don't know what what I came across, but, you know, we were created as human beings, not human doers. Yeah. And, and yeah. This, this idea of, you know, pulling the heartstring, like you said, pulling the heartstrings of, yeah. of, of people is, is where understanding not just what trauma is, but how it impacts us. Mm -hmm. but not just how it impacts us. What are we going to do? Like that piece right there, when you said, I have the power, I have the authority to choose what this trauma can mean for me. Yeah, yeah. Not just what it should know. Well, what will it be? How yeah. can I reframe this? How will I reframe this particular experience so that it not neatly fits into you know some narrative it's and it's not about that and I'm I'm so glad that you touched on that yeah. but it's just what is it going to mean for me moving forward and yeah. and however I reframe that is good enough good en it's good enough it is the, ah, good wow enough. yeah and everyone's story mm. right I, I want for individuals to know that your pain is sacred mm. Right, wow. you use the term exploitation a lot. Again, that kind of goes along with the, the, the term sliming. Mm -hmm. I want for your listening audience to know, and, and we see it right now, everybody wants to be a motivational speaker, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to get up on stage and talk about their pain. Again, what is the intent? Yeah. Are you trying to free other individuals who might be going through a similar struggle, mm -hmm. right? Are you trying to level up from a financial perspective and thinking that your pain might be your payout, mm. right? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. But you can pimp your pain and send you spiraling backwards if you're ill-prepared. Wow, wow, wow. And you've done more harm than good in that time, right? So again, the intent, I tell a lot of individuals, they will write their story. And, and this is what we do in therapy. Yes. We don't want you necessarily to keep your trauma narrative. Because first of all, we know it's going to continually to take shape as mm -hmm. time progresses, right? right. Because you're still going to be filling in gaps. It's only a small aspect mm -hmm. that your mind recalls at a time. That's right. So... You know, we we have them do like a celebration. Like you got to this moment, right? What are we going to yeah. do with that? And many burn it up. Mm. They, we release it in the sky. Don't nobody care. Where it go? Right? Because <laughs> <laughs> right, I've been carrying this thing for so long, I don't want it no right. more. <laughs> right? Some people yeah. have thrown it in the depths of the sea, like God says, like to remember it no more. Yeah. 
Right. So it is not that your story, your traumatic story has to necessarily go out to the world. Mm -hmm. But if it does, don't do it recklessly. That's right. That's right. Do it with great intent to transform self in the lives of others. And so that is an intentional work. It is. Wow. Leah, I want to thank you so much for just coming on and sharing your expertise. Before we go, what are you working on now? <laughs> what oh, do you want people to, to know what you're doing or just, you know, just let me know. Um, I usually have, you know, the screen that has all of the information, you know, but since we're not doing a what's your story, you're going to have to just do your best and uh, take them to the site, whatever it is, <laughs> let them know. Shameless plug time. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So um, again, I am a clinical therapist. I practice in the state of Michigan, but outside of the state of Michigan, I do uh, mental reconstruction coaching. And with that, um, I'm assisting individuals in dealing with those things that have them stuck, right? Mm -hmm. They know that there's more within and they have not been able to bring that thing to fruition to get that body moving and going, right? And so with that, a lot of times you have to tear down to reveal. And that's what I assist with in my coaching process. Um, and so you can find me at my website. Um, it's www.intervene. And it's spelled really tricky. So it's a capital N. T as in Tom, E as in Edward, R as in revenue, E as in Edward, N as in Nancy, E as in Edward dot com. And there, there you'll find all of my information, uh, my, my phone number, my social media platforms. You will have access to me um, by going to that particular website. Um, and so, you know, some of the things, again, outside of my coaching, um, I'm assisting um, an individual here in the city of Detroit. Um, we're putting together a speaker's academy. Um, and so many want to get up on stage, but they're not prepared just yet. Um, and so what I do is, is I assist them and coach them through that process as well, um, preparing them to actually take that story with intent and with purpose, um, but being able to craft it, carve it out and hold space for it before they actually make it yeah. to um, that next you know, level of the stage. And so those are the things that I'm doing right now. Um, I have uh, a book. I was a visionary author on that. Um, Iron Sharpens Iron. Um, we're looking at it coming out at the end of July. And so we're in the process of pre-sales as well. So yeah, I got a lot going on. A okay, lot going okay. on. Where yeah. can they find the pre-sale? Is it on uh, Amazon? Um, so it's not on Amazon. It went through, um, actually, we love to do grassroots sorts of things and to give back to our people. And so it awesome. went through um, someone out in the D.C. area, Red Baby Publishing. Okay. Um, and so, again, if you go to my website, follow me on social media, um, you can either find me on Intervene on social media or Leah Chapman. Um, look me up and don't, you know, hesitate to DM me. But you'll see on my banner, there is the book that is present there. And we can yeah, go about moving forward there. But iron sharpens iron. Okay. Iron can't sharpen iron, Chris, if they don't even know that they're an iron. Mm, this said, you got to have us on here for another <laughs> 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 yeah, it was such a pleasure. Such a pleasure having you. Um, stay on. We're, we're going to chat a little bit after, but uh, for everyone else that might be just coming in, you missed it. However, <laughs> you can go back <laughs> as we uh, talk about trauma, personal storytelling, and uh, even media agenda setting and how all of them interplay with one another. But really, the outcome for me, the biggest uh, one of the, the biggest takeaways is that your trauma is your trauma and how you choose to refrain that trauma to tell your narrative is okay. And it should be good enough because you are. I don't know, that sounded good to me. I'm just end yeah. on that note. <laughs> All right, you guys be blessed. We'll see you on the next one.